Hey guys, in this video I show you how to use an Impact Alex Mini with Nectar's DAW integration for Logic Pro X. We create music using Logic's internal software instruments and I show you how to control their perimeters directly from the hardware. All internal instruments are pre-mapped so you can take control right away. We'll also look at assigning and controlling third-party plugins. With DAW integration, Impact Alex Mini can control Logic's transport functions, smart controls and project navigation. There's even an arpeggiator and a part 2 function which you definitely should check out, but not in this video. We now focus on the Logic-based functions of your Impact Alex Mini. Alright, let's jump right in. First, please ensure you have installed and activated Nectar's DAW integration for Logic Pro X. How you do this is covered in the user guide that came with your software download. 21 DAW functions are assigned to Alex Mini's transport bar, so you can navigate your sessions easily. If you press the shift button, it lights up blue and you can open or close the mixer window with S1. You plug in instrument windows with S2 and the smart control window with S3. In the second row, you'll find track up and track down to navigate through your tracks. With patch up and patch down, you browse through the AU presets of a software instrument when the plugin window is open. When the plugin window is closed, the patch buttons step through the channel settings in Logic's library. The transport functions let you move through your session without even touching your mouse, almost. Of course, you have play, stop, record, but you can also rewind and forward in one bar steps. Turn the click on and off and activate the cycle between your locators. There's a third level of functionality if you press transport buttons while holding shift. Undo will undo your last edit. You can also set left and right locators. Just navigate to the desired position, press shift, track up to set the left locator, shift and track down to set the right locator. With the cycle button, you can activate the cycle mode between your locators. And with shift rewind or shift forward, you navigate to the start or end of your locators. You can even activate Logic's arpeggiator from Alex Mini with shift and play. And also very handy, you can toggle automation between latch and read modes, pressing shift and record. And there's the big part on the left that controls the volume of your selected track or when shift is held, the master volume. Press the page button once to control Logic's smart controls. Both the user and default LEDs are lit to indicate smart control mode. Smart controls can control effects parameters as well as instrument parameters. All of Logic's bundled channel settings are mapped logically via the smart controls. So combined with the selected track volume, transport controls and of course the patch buttons for stepping through those channel settings, you are pretty much ready to go. Next, I'll show you how Alex Mini's unique instrument control can take your workflow to another level. Let's make a sound our own now by tweaking it from the hardware. At first, press Shift and Instrument to create a new track with your default instrument. You can set the default instrument when you create a new track in Logic and choose, for example, RetroSynth from the list. Make sure you expand details, it might be collapsed. After that, each time you press Shift and Instrument, a new track is created with RetroSynth automatically loaded. You can choose any instrument you want as a default, including third-party instruments. Anyway, I'll pick Logic's RetroSynth to show you the assignments. Press the shift button once to access the transport button's second layer of functions, printed in blue above the buttons. With S2, you can open and close the plugin window. For all pre-mapped plugins, the screen printing on Alex Mini is a guide for the perimeter mapping. We have assigned cutoff, resonance, envelope amount, LFO, in the case of the retro synth, it's LFO amount, oscillator tune, oscillator level. This blends between the two oscillators. 
and two oscillator modulation parameters. We have pre-mapped them to shape modulation and to control vibrato amount. To avoid parameter jumps, values will only change if you literally pick them up at their currently set value. So if your parameter doesn't react immediately, that is why. Simply move the control until you pass the currently set value. The two LEDs below the large part update for each parameter to show the current soft takeover status. If the left LED is lit red, you need to move the part down to pick the value up until both LEDs light up green. And if the right LED is red, you have to move the part up. If you prefer the controls to react instantly, you can change this behavior in Logic's control surface settings. All included software synths and also the drum synths are mapped like this. The assignment is a little different each time, but you will see it's quite intuitive. For the vintage instruments like B3 or Clavinet included with Logic, the screen mapping of course doesn't correspond, but you still get intuitive pre-mapped control. Now let me show you how to assign your own perimeter controls, change existing maps or build your own for a third-party plugin. First, make sure instrument mode is selected. I'll use the Ham synth for this, which is a really cool free polyphonic synth by Matt Title. If you don't want to change an existing mapping, you can enter a user page with Shift and Page. Remember, you don't want to open the Smart Controls Inspector, which would be indicated by both LEDs. When the user page is selected, only the white LED is lit. Toggle between user page and the smart control inspector with shift and page. To assign a perimeter for control from the hardware, press and hold shift while moving the software perimeter you want to map. Keep holding shift and move the hardware perimeter you want to assign. This opens up Logic's control surface window and activates Logic's learn mode. Releasing shift confirms the mapping and exits learn automatically. If it was previously assigned like here, you have to confirm that you'd like to reassign it in Logic's controller assignment dialog. You can press the play button on Alex Mini to confirm. Your assignments are automatically stored, so there's no need to do it all over again for every new project, which is pretty smart. A potentially handy tip. If Logic's large controller assignments window gets in your way, you can switch it to easy view. Just make sure you also press unlink so it doesn't switch back to expert next time you assign a perimeter. When link is active, you can also delete assignments in this view. In case you messed things up and want to go back where you started, restoring the default page mappings is achieved by activating learn, moving a control and then deleting its assignment. Using Impact Alex Mini's pad maps 1 and 2, you are able to play many drum instruments straight away. But you might want to change the pad assignment to better suit your needs. Here's how. Press Shift and Internal to activate Setup Mode. Then press the E1 key on your keyboard to select Pad Learn. Now choose a pad by hitting it once and pick the sound you want to assign by playing the key on the keyboard. Hit the next pad if you want to assign more sound. When done, exit pad learn mode by pressing either internal, instrument or function. Now you can play the assigned sounds on the pad. Your assignments are retained in memory until you change them or load another pad map. If you'd like to store your assignment in one of the four pad maps, Hold Shift and press Internal to activate Setup Mode. Next, press F1 on the keyboard to select Save Pad Map. Now the lower pad row lights up in four different colors, one for each pad map. Press the pad you want to save your map to. It starts blinking. Now press C3, Enter to save the map and exit Setup. To load a pad map, simply hold down internal, then press one of the four pads labeled pad map. The pad's color would change according to the selected map. Pad maps are a great way to have instant access to up to 32 node assignments.
You can write your perimeter changes into your selected track and create really lively dynamic automations. All you have to do is press and hold shift and record to activate the latch mode. Now you are able to perform with the controls throughout your track while playing, even with more than one perimeter at the time. Make sure you change the mode back to read with shift and record to avoid any unwanted automation curves. You can also create markers to speed up your project navigation. First, make sure you are in instrument or internal mode and activate marker mode by pressing scenes. Then hit shift and the pad you want to create a new marker, let's say for the verse section. An illuminated orange pad indicates an existing marker, only the selected one will be green. Now I create a second marker, say for the chorus section. I move through the session with the arrow buttons and create the marker. Now I can easily jump to sections directly using the pads. To delete a marker, press Shift and double tap the pad. Marker is deleted. Press Scenes again to exit marker mode. Okay, that's all for now. You'll find more information about using Impact Alex Mini with Logic in the PDF file that came with your download. If you'd like to dig deeper into the hardware features and settings of Impact Alex Mini, please check the user guide. Thanks for watching. We hope this video helps you getting going with the Impact Alex Mini and Logic. Have fun, keep up creating the music of tomorrow.